and so on. Um, so I met Nick and I was with Nick for some time and then and then I left Nick. No, I didn't leave Nick, no. Um, I had to go back to Birmingham because I had college. So I was with Nick a few weeks and I went back to Birmingham because I was at a QAC college at the time. Um, and then I met Lee um, and that went quite well for a while. <coughs> until until I met two gay friends called Steve and I think the other one might have been called Richard and one night we th me and Lee stayed around theirs and watched films around theirs I think Lee was only 19 at the time and I was only 22, 23 at the time and both very naive really I didn't really think much into it And but he asked us to stay but Lee couldn't stay because he had college the next day um, I stayed, I slept in their bed and basically um, Steve, when Richard went to work the following early in the morning, Steve basically fucked me uh, and um, I wasn't going to tell Lee about it and I, I spoke to Alan Margin about it and Alan Margin insisted that I tell Lee about it. He says either you tell Lee or I will because because if you sleep around you can catch something. So I did tell Lee and he was upset at the time and and then and then we went to Nick's in the Christmas time and Lee stayed around Nick's for over a month. And it was very difficult because I went back to Birmingham um without Lee and I felt I'm trying to describe my life because there's been various problems in my life and I'm trying to describe I'm trying to pinpoint I'm trying to pinpoint where where it's all gone wrong really. Um Lee actually left me for Nick for over a month and I was actually very, very depressed, very very upset and very depressed at the time. Um and then when he came back he moved into mine. And we had numerous problems in Birmingham, loads of problems, nasty neighbours. The one neighbour, all I said to him was, can you turn your music down and you threatened to shoot me. <sighs> but, um, I don't know, I just, I just, I'm just trying to pinpoint why, why I've been looking for love for so long and why it's always gone wrong. And I think... I think one reason it's gone wrong is because I have a fear of of being cheated on, which, and this is the problem in life, isn't it? People cheat on each other, and I mean, I've only, <clears throat> I only done it that once when I was only I was only twenty two at the time, and I wasn't really thinking of, <clears throat> yeah. I wasn't really thinking of the consequences at that time and also, um, yeah, I wasn't thinking of the consequences. I think it just creates hate, it creates a lot of hate cheating. I mean, Alan's cheated on me loads of times. I haven't cheated on him once. Um, I, haven't, I haven't cheated on any of my partners, well, apart from Lee, which I did that one time. Which is like a one-off, um, but I haven't actually cheated on anyone. Not, not like, not like that. No. Um, <clears throat> so. Came back earlier tonight because um, I was falling asleep on the bus coming back. I was like, <laughs> I was like completely, I was co completely conked out the whole bus journey back because I haven't been sleeping very well lately. So I was completely, I was completely out the whole journey back from Birmingham to Georgia. I was completely out of it. Um, yeah. 
I think you can't take life too seriously as well because otherwise you're going to spend a long time being depressed. I mean, I spent many years being depressed. I mean, I mean, I can barely remember. I can barely remember a time when I'm happy. I mean, um, the first year I was with Aaron, I was happy. Maybe the first year I was with Lee, I was happy. Um, first, maybe the first year or two or, or three of being, I don't know, I've been with Lee, I was happy, I'm not sure. But there's, um, there's a lot of... And then obviously I've had other partners since Lee and I've had other partners before Aaron, which, <coughs> which, um, which were also difficult because I, I found it very difficult to trust after I, when I finally left Lee, he, he, he'd actually cheated on me several times, um, himself, um, he'd met someone called Craig Saunders from... Alcester and when I went cycling I'll come back the one day and and this Craig Saunders was in Lee's house was in Lee's flat and they were getting dressed so <clears throat> I mean I did I did I did make friends with Lee again um, which took months and months I didn't see him for for at least three or four months, and then I made friends with him again. And I had to keep him at a distance. I couldn't <clears throat> I couldn't visit him every day. I couldn't even visit him once a week. I used to try and visit him every couple of weeks or so. And um, and like. I think long term relationships unless unless the person's very pure they don't work out in my experience long term relationships unless they're both very committed very very determined to to keep each other happy in my experience it doesn't work out that's my experience of relationships um and I don't even tend to go for the nice guys, I tend to go for the bad ones. I don't... When I've been with nice people in the past, I felt... When I've been with nice men in the past, like Chris Chris, Chris Blythe in Birmingham, when I was with him for six, seven months, I felt almost uncomfortable. Um, it almost feels like happiness for me feels uncomfortable. It feels like for me to be happy feels really, really uncomfortable. Whereas me being messed around or cheated on feels comfortable. And that's really sad. And I need to I need to work on building my confidence up so that I can be happy with someone that treats me right. <coughs> because I've never really thought I've never really gone I've never really thought this through really. I've always just I think with my meditation, I, I think it helps to clarify my thinking a lot because what I've just told you, I've never actually really admitted to myself. The fact that I've never admitted that to myself, I've never admitted, yeah. Um, because meditation takes you deep, very deep into your memory bank, so you can go through all those memories and you can actually sort through them all. You know, like a computer needs to be re rebooted to to work. So yeah, so um, I just thought about that. Yeah, I've never really, I've never really thought about that before. That um, I actually feel uncomfortable in a happy relationship. <clears throat> For me, a happy relationship feels uncomfortable. And that's probably why I attracted those friends, Steve and Richard. Um, and they, them two were having problems as well because I remember Steve, I remember Stephen taking me into the bedroom and he was he was smoking out the window and he was chatting away to me. <coughs> and I remember him saying that Richard was cheating on him and that. And it was a long it was a long time ago now, but I vaguely remember it. He was telling me that Richard had been cheating on him. So obviously he was just using me to annoy 
to get his own back on Richard. Um, yeah. <sighs> I don't know. People, people out there. <laughs> mm. It's a problem with the gay world, isn't it? It's all mind games. It's all. I mean, the straight world's probably sim. I mean, the straight world's not much better. I mean, there's a lot of cheating. Even when people have children, there's there's still a lot of cheating happening. I mean, that doesn't always solve the problem. Being married, having children. I mean, I was married, and I was married, and I was cheated on. So being married doesn't necessarily make people more faithful. It might do for a couple of years, but eventually, if you worry about it, then eventually that'll happen. <sighs> and I think that's what I've worried about my whole life. Because of my, ch I think my childhood was so traumatised from my dad being ill. I'm not blaming my dad, of course I'm not, because that, was his, that happened to him, that's his illness. I'm just trying to understand it from my experience that when I was um, I just can't ever remember a time when I've been happy it's just well I can I mean I was happy with in the first year of being with Alan so that would be 2014 I was happy in 2014 <coughs> Before 2014, I think I was happy in two thousand. I was happy in 2013 because I was with Chris, Chris Blythe. I was with him for about six, seven months, and I was, I was, I was happy with him. Um, he treated me really nice, um, and I found that uncomfortable, to be honest, very uncomfortable. It was nice, but it felt, it felt good, but it felt uncomfortable. I mean. Um, and I think I messed him around a bit because I was still, I still had a lot of anger issues with, I was still very, I was still very angry with Lee in 2013, I think. Um, if I'm being honest, I think I was very angry still and I think that carried over into that relationship. <sighs> but I think by the time 2014 came around, I think I'd calmed down a lot and I think I was ready. But, but Aaron obviously wasn't ready because he'd come out of two relationships within just a few months of each other. He'd come out of a relationship with his cousin, James Johns, which he told me left him in the Christmas of four, 13. The end of 2013, he left him. And then he got with Chris Bravi in March or April of 2014. And then he jumped from Chris Bravi and got with me in the May of 2014. But I didn't even know anything that he was with Chris Bravi. Because I met Danny Walker, Chris Bravi and Aaron Johns at the Liberal Stars meeting. And, yeah. If Aaron thinks I'm going to just suddenly, just because he's messaged me, and if I mean, I've, I, <laughs> if he suddenly thinks I'm going to turn around and say, Oh, you can come back, I forgive you, this, that, and the other, I don't think so. I mean, yes, I pray for him, and I'm going to pray for him for the rest of his life. And I pray for his family as well, I pray for my family, I pray for my friends, I pray for my exes, I pray for people I know. <coughs> and that helps me, it gives me peace of mind, it gives me clarity, it gives me happiness. Yeah, that's why it gives me happiness. So, um, 